Hey everybody, this is Russell from Tips, Tricks, and Fixes from Low Rider Hydraulics. I'm with Aaron. We're doing a uh, 64 Impala convertible, uh, taking the body off to reinforce the frame. Uh, I wasn't here during most of uh, the work, so Aaron is going to be the uh, tour guide during this. Hey everybody, um, I'm the owner of the 64 Impala you see behind us. You might notice the body's up on the, the hoist and the frame has been separated. Let me assure you that this is no easy task to do. Um, a lot of things have to be done in order to actually successfully separate the body from the frame. You got, on a convertible especially, there's eight body mounts that have to be taken off, right? And that's just a start. Um, you got to take apart the, the transmission lines that go to the radiator, um, the heater lines that go uh, throughout the engine. Um, there's uh, the drive cable that connects the speedometer to the engine and a whole myriad of other things. A lot of people, um, they actually try to take off the front end of the car as well, the fenders, the hood, stuff like that. We actually managed to avoid doing that, which saved us a lot of time. Um, and then just by being very meticulous and taking apart the different wirings that go to the headlights and things like that. Oh, not to forget uh, the steering column itself has to be separated. That's a big one. And then once you get all that done, you know, you get your uh, hoist arms underneath the body of the car, and you lift that thing up slowly watching. I mean, you gotta have like four or five people watching to make sure you didn't accidentally forget to disconnect something. And next you know, that thing's off the frame, just like you see behind us. So we're gonna go over step by step each different thing that, uh, that we're talking about here, the things that had to be disconnected in order to lift the car. All right, so starting at the rear of the car, one of the first things we're gonna take off is obviously the bumper, right? Being very careful when you're pulling the bumper off, not to scratch the shit out of your paint, okay? Um, I already told you that the convertible Impala has eight body mounts, okay? You got two that are just behind the rear arch on each side, and you got uh, another one that's part of the rear arch, right? Moving forward of the X-frame, right? Just behind the transmission on the left, left right side, there's another one, and then all the way up front, just behind the front spring purchase, another one. All right, so you gotta make sure you take those apart, right? Be careful not to lose uh, your bolts and screws and different things like that, all right? Um, fuel line, you definitely gotta take your fuel line apart. You see ours is obviously apart, um, but it's very simple, you just take it apart and then, uh, you know, electrical connections in the rear, make sure those come apart as well, all right? Uh, move forward. Let's see here, what do we got? Mm. Alright, more more electrical connectors. Okay, so here's the uh, speedometer cable that goes to the transmission. Right? Definitely is something that has to be disconnected prior to lifting the car. Alright, uh, you can see up into the uh, engine bay. This car comes with AC, AC, so that's one of the things that we have to disconnect as well. These are the uh, hoses and lines that go to the back of the air conditioning compressor that is still attached to the engine. All right, you just disconnect those as well as the uh, heater hoses, which are they're still up there. It might be a little bit difficult to see, but you know there's two hoses. Uh, disconnect right. those. So don't forget the steering column. All right, the, the Impala connects or disconnects up front, but there's some uh, screws and bolts inside the car just below the steering wheel itself that you have to actually disconnect and loosen. That'll allow the steering wheel to. Uh, come back towards the car and it'll allow it to separate from the actual second second piece of the steering column right here, okay? Um, there was a couple bolts on the front end that kept the front bumper on as well. Um, the, the very front of the frame right here, right? There's some bolts in here that kept it on. And then obviously the upper and lower radiator hoses, right? Because they're, they're part of the engine and they connect to the uh, radiator itself, which is just part of the, uh, the front. Yeah. Alright, also uh, we have the brake line, which is right here, that disconnects from the brake booster, which is still up on the uh, the back of the firewall of the car. Uh, you definitely got to make sure you disconnect that, and which is going to cause you to have to redo your brakes once you get the body back on the car as well, but that's just simple bleeding. Alright, so everybody knows that uh, when you juice in a car, there's a big difference between a hard top and a convertible, right? The hard top of the car supports the car in a lot of stress points and the convertible doesn't. But one of the things that Chevy did, taking this into consideration, is over the rear uh, arches of the frame, they added this reinforcement piece on both sides. Only the convertible has this right here. You can see uh, it's got three holes in it here and both the, they mirror each other on each side. So that added some reinforcement um, to the car itself. 
but all we did is come along and now we're starting the process of adding some more plate steel to the frame itself. Um, oh, so Chevy had a uh, smaller piece of metal that connected the frame rails that didn't really do a whole lot else besides that. There was nothing connected to it. As you can see, this is, what, maybe a sixteenth, eighth of an inch, not even that, uh, of a piece of steel. So we took, cut this thing out because this thing did absolutely nothing. And we took this massive behemoth bar right here, right, and we welded it on top of uh, the plate steel that we had already done. And this thing is going to provide significant uh, reinforcement, you know, when we when we go to do a three wheel and side to side and things like that, all right. So it's going to help uh, keep the frame where it's supposed to be. All right. So you've probably seen on YouTube a lot of different people have their own videos on how they're going to reinforce frames, and everybody's got a, a way that works. And we kind of did our own research and watched uh, different ways that people have done it. And we even called Hoppos Hydraulics and said, hey, what size metal would you use on your frames? And Alex over at Hoppos told us 316. So that's exactly what we bought. This right here is a four foot by 10 foot sheet of uh, 316 regular steel. It costs about 230 bucks. At least that's what I paid for it, right? Um, so what we did is we went and bought some poster board from Dollar General, you know, just some flimsy, cheap stuff, not a big deal. All right, and all you do to get a, a good template, you know, you'll end up with something like that, is you take the poster board itself, all right, you lay it up against the steel itself, and you take a, a hard object of some kind, all right, and you can rub the lines of where the frame, the frame actually is, all right, and that'll give you a perfect outline of the template that you need to make. So if I was gonna take that and cut it out again, I would simply take my, my scissors and I would cut the line that it had created. And when it's all said and done, we end up with pieces of templates that look like this for different parts of the car. We elected not to remove the body mount brackets from this car. That was a personal choice that I made because um, I'm not going after like a, a, a hopper, a, a crazy you know 10 battery setup. I got six batteries with four pumps with two whammy tanks. So we just wanted to make sure that the, the frame didn't get twisted, okay? So once we make our template, we came over here to the uh, piece of sheet metal. We place it on, held it in place, however, however you want to do it. And we busted it out the plasma cutter. Probably one of the easiest and fastest way to cut at least 316s to place steel, okay? All right, you take that. If you've ever used a plasma cutter before, you'll know how to use it, all right? Um, very simple, very quick. Grind off any loop or rough edges that you might have. Take it back to the the place on the car where you're actually going to put it on the frame. Make sure it fits. If it doesn't, you know, take your grinder, grind a little bit away, whatever you need to come off. And then once you get it in place, right, take your C-clamps, big heavy duty ones, just like you see here, right, and you'll take that, that template or the, the piece of metal that you cut out for your template, you'll put it on the car and hold it into place exactly where you want it before you come in through with your badass Lincoln welder or Miller welder, excuse me. All right, and welded into place by a master welder, Chris Jackson. Okay, so here is a section of uh, the frame that's just before the rear spring purchase that we actually got a piece of uh, 316 welded in after we cut it out of our template, all right? One of the things you'll notice that this is pretty much welded in, but when you're, you got the C-clamps and you have it clamped into place, you're not just taking your welder and just welding the entire thing all at once, right? That's gonna get the metal hot, it's gonna make the metal uh, warp and do different things that it shouldn't do. So what you'll do is you'll, you'll tack it in three or four spots to hold it where it's supposed to be, and then you wanna weld you know, three or four inches at a time, not all in a straight line. So you could do like, like four inches here, four inches on the bottom, you know, four inches here, and then eventually they'll all connect, but you're not keeping the whole thing really super hot while you're doing it. And once you're done, if you have beautiful welds like these, you're good to go. If you've got some stuff that maybe you need to practice on, come back through, uh, take your grinder, and uh, you know, get rid of those rough edges. Okay, so one other thing uh, we're gonna talk about is uh, when you're taking your, your templates and you, you're cutting them out of the uh, plate steel, right, and you're, you're getting ready to, to weld them on the frame, you gotta take a couple things into consideration, okay? Start with the sides first, that's your biggest area, generally open area, because the top has got a whole lot of different bends and shapes to it that are really hard to contour around, right? Weld your tops, 
right? And you get your welds in, but you when you put the, the actual top piece of the reinforcement on, you're gonna have to cut it a little bit short to allow um, room for the new welds to come in and actually penetrate the metal of the frame itself, right? You wanna make sure that all the pieces of metal actually penetrate the frame, right? Because that's where it's gonna to bind to, right? And uh, create the box um, and reinforcement itself, okay? Uh, also, you can see this body mount right here. Um, the factory, we have one on the other side, it's not welded yet. The factory only uh, spot, spot welds these things, right? So we came through and stiffened up some of these. We're gonna reinforce it as well, that way, um, you know, it's just stronger, especially the spring perches where, you know, the cylinders and the springs are gonna be. But these un unwelded parts from the factory, you can always go over those as well, just to make it that much stronger. All right, so a common question that a lot of uh, people with hydraulics on their cars have is, hey, do I need to reinforce my frame? The answer is yes. How much do I need to reinforce my frame? That is a question. If you've got a G-Body, Monte Carlo, Buick Regal, Cutlass Supreme, right, you just want to reinforce the arches, right, that's fine, just reinforce the arches, but take in part or consideration how many batteries you're going to have in your trunk. A battery typically weighs about 65 pounds, plus or minus, right? Six batteries at 65 pounds is about 400 pounds just in batteries in your in your your trunk, right? Plus or minus a little bit, right? Um, having the convertible, we're gonna obviously we've taken many steps beyond that to actually box in the frame, right? To to, re to remove the car from the body or the frame from the body, so we can get to those parts that you really can't get to, right? Um, if you're unable to do stuff like that, just try to attack the places that you can actually get to. Like I said, the the arches. Uh, are important, especially doing three wheel. Everybody loves to do three wheel. It's probably one of the funnest things next to hopping that you can do. You know, if you're like me, taking a left around every corner, you're gonna bust a three wheel. Reinforcing the uh, rear arches as well as uh, boxing it all the way to the front, like what we're doing, uh, and putting in this reinforcement bar here is one way to to help prevent the frame from actually twisting. Right, because when you start twisting frames. First off, you're never gonna get the frame back to the where it was, right? You can get it close, but it's never gonna be the same. Second off, once you start doing that, the body, the doors, where the doors close and meet the body, they're gonna have gaps in them that are really, really hard to fix. Um, so you wanna try to avoid those. I could have simply came through here and put the hydraulics on, and I could have been hopping this weekend, but I knew long-term down the road that had I done that and not had the discipline and not do three wheels, I'd have a 64 Apollo convertible that is, you know, has big gaps in the doors and the frames twisted and it's not worth a crap. Now we're taking, we took those precautions and we're gonna, just like we're doing here, starting from the back, forward, up over the arches, and we haven't got there yet, but we're gonna move alongside the drive shaft tunnel all the way to the front of the car to the front arches, you can see here. So currently, uh, we're just behind the uh, trailer, lower control arm mounts. All right, but we're still moving forward. And bear in mind, we just started this yesterday. I pulled this car into Go Lube Express yesterday, drove it, and in two and a half, three hours, we had the body separated from the frame, and we worked till two o'clock in the morning. Showed it back up here uh, this morning at about 8.45, and we started doing it some more. So this is only about a day's work that we, what we've done. Granted, there's several people that have been working on this, so if you're trying to do something like this yourself, it's probably gonna take significantly longer. All right, so uh, once you actually do have the frame separated from the body, especially in older cars like this, you're gonna start taking a look at your body mounts, your, your body bushings, right? You can see this one, although it's fairly old, it's still in good condition, right? It's got some uh, cracking in it. Uh, if this is not satisfactory for you or if you think you need to replace them, what better time than now to do that, right? Um, Polyurethane bushings are always a good replacement. They last longer and they're a little bit stiffer, so they'll uh, absorb the car a little bit better. Um, but if they're chewed out, rotten, and pieces are falling off them, definitely replace your bushings, right? Um, you can see up here in uh, the rear mount here, this is the rear, the furthest rear mount. This is supposed to uh, just unscrew from where the body mount was, but there's a, uh, a nut inside there that's not supposed to move when you undo the body mount. Well, in this case, it actually has moved, all right? So what we're gonna have to do is come in through the side after we drop down the gas tank and actually cut a hole in the side right, that's not visible and actually uh, either cut that bolt off or 
figure out some way to either push it all the way up through and, and replace this because this right here is now no longer usable. But those are one of the things you actually find when you start taking your car apart, especially with old vehicles like this. Um, so with hydraulics, when you have a hydraulic suspension, um, once you put it on, it, it makes certain things on the car no longer relevant. As you can see here, um, these are the shock mounts. My car has, the rear anyway, had air shocks on it, right? And they're still here, these are still present. So what it allowed me to do is actually raise or lower the rear of the car about three inches, you know, just straight stock. But since we're gonna have hydraulic cylinders, these are no longer relevant. So obviously we're gonna remove these cylinders and, and the air lines that go with them. Well, with that, the mounts that are associated with these cylinders are no longer relevant and they're no longer necessary. So instead of keeping them on and just to have something that's now potentially in the way for anything we may need to do in the future, we're gonna go ahead and actually cut these mounts completely off, right? And get rid of them and, and grind it smooth and put some uh, 415 on it so it doesn't rust in those, those bare metal areas, right? This is not something that's required. They could definitely stay on there. The shocks themselves will not stay on there, but if you wanted to leave the mounts, you could definitely do that, but it's a personal choice that I'm making is to go ahead and cut those away. All right, uh, so for those of you who have uh, 60s model Impalas, one thing that you run into is when you're trying to raise your rear end up, if you got like 12 inch cylinders or bigger, you, your drive shaft is gonna come in contact with the lower portion of the drive shaft tunnel. So what we do is uh, cut out the drive shaft tunnel, the lower portion, and to allow the actual drive shaft to go below the frame. That way you can get full lockup. But one thing to consider about this is you need to reinforce it afterwards. The entire bottom of where the X meets uh, in the frame is a very, very flat area, all right? So it's a good, good place to put a piece of uh, play steel, but you just gotta make sure that you keep the area where the carrier bearing bolts are open, all right? You do not wanna box that in because uh, the carrier bearings definitely do not last forever. Even the, the heavy duty ones don't last forever. Right? And you wanna be able to access those bolts that'll actually be able to remove the carrier bearing uh, that's inside the drive shaft tunnel.